Good uh, morning, good afternoon, good evening, and even good night for some of you. Welcome to the webinar, Advancing Official Statistics, Celebrating Milestones and Shaping the Future of the Fundamental Principles of Official Statistics. I'm Gabriel Games, Interregional Advisor at the UN Statistics Division, and I'm very pleased to moderate this webinar. Maybe let me very quickly go through the context and the objective of this webinar, and then I will introduce the panelists. So the webinar marks the culmination of a global series of expert consultations, workshop, and conferences focusing on deepening the understanding of the fundamental principles of official statistics, the FPOS, in a rapidly evolving data ecosystem. The webinar will start with a panel discussion on the development, relevance, and implementation of the principles, alongside a review of the proposed terms of reference for the independent advisory board and the commented outlines of the revitalized FPOS implementation guidelines. The webinar will follow with an open debate to enrich dialogue ahead of the 55th session of the Statistical Commission. I'm very pleased to uh, introduce our distinguished panelists. It is, I will go through, I mean, in an alphabetical order. The first one is Jean-Louis Baudin, a distinguished retiree from INSEE, the French National Statistical Office. He served as president of the IOS between 89 and 91, and later of the ISI from 99 to 2001. In 90 and 91, he played a crucial role in drafting the European version of the principles. This significant work was adopted by the Conference of European Statisticians. He will tell us more, and its impact was further expanded when endorsed by the UN Statistical Commission and later by the UN General Assembly, respectively 30 and 10 years ago. Our second panelist is Jimena Clark. She is an economist with a diverse background. She has worked in the public sector, private companies, and also autonomous institutions like the Central Bank and Academia. She was a general director of the Chilean National Statistical Institute from 2014 to 2018. During her tenure, she led a population and housing census, modernized the NSI, and worked on a new statistical law. Currently, she's an independent consultant in statistical matters for various international organizations. I welcome also Dr. Nora Madaya, a sociologist and a specialist in strategic leadership. She works as an independent consultant. Her work includes developing national strategies for statistics and using administrative and citizen generated data for statistical purposes. She has also evaluated donor support to statistics in Africa. Previously, she worked at the Uganda Bureau of Statistics. There, she focused on data quality, monitoring and evaluation, gender statistics, and coordinating the national statistical system. She's currently reviewing the FPOS implementation guidelines jointly with Jimena Clark. Dr. Shaija Sharma, is the director of the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific in Chiba, Japan, SIAP. She was a member of the Indian Statistical Service and the Director General of India's National Statistics Office. She has worked in India's statistical system for about 35 years. She holds a PhD in Bayesian Sequential Interference from the University of Lucknow. Hagenbur Snorason, welcome, served as Iceland's chief statistician for 23 years since, 20, uh, since 2007 
He has been an independent expert in official statistics. He has worked with the UN and various international and multinational agencies. His expertise has been sought after in many countries across Africa, Asia and Europe. Recently, in 2022 and 2023, he consulted, he was a consultant for UNSD uh, and he worked on issues related to the UN fundamental principles of official statistics and in particular on the terms of reference that will be submitted to the Statistical Commission. As mentioned earlier, I'm Gabriel Games, UNSD Interregional Advisor. Let me go quickly, I mean, through the context of this uh, event that we're having now. And I would like to start explaining the decision of the 54th session of the Commission last year in 2023. The Commission actually recognized the vital role of the fundamental principles of official statistics in ensuring official statistics stay trusted and relevant amidst modernization challenges. The Commission also acknowledged the significant contribution of the various friends of the chair groups in promoting and monitoring the FPOS implementation and enhancing global understanding. The Commission acknowledged the proposal to establish an advisory board to strengthen the FPOS implementation and requested the terms of reference be submitted at the 55th session in 2024. So basically this year, end of February. The Commission also welcomed the initiative to review and refine the existing implementation guidelines for clarity, user friendliness, and improved compliance and coherence. And then, and it's a very important point, the Commission emphasized inclusivity in the regional activities leading to the 2024 FPOS celebrations, requesting collaborative organization of events, including discussions on the board's term of reference and refinement of the implementation guidelines. So this is actually what we have done. And I told you that this event is actually concluding this sequence. So in preparation of the 55th session of the Commission that is going to happen end of February, we had a broad and inclusive UNSD had a broad and inclusive engagement through various initiatives, including expert consultations, webinars, workshops, and international conferences to deepen FPOS the principles understanding. We have focused on challenges and success stories in implementing the fundamental principles in various regional and national contexts. And we have jointly, in a collaborative manner, reflected on how an independent advisory board and revitalized guidelines could sustain and promote the implementation of the principles. What we are going to submit to the 55th session of the Commission is actually the outcome of these rounds of consultations. First will be the commented outlines for two distinct set of implementation guidelines, and we will discuss that further. And then, of course, also the terms of reference of the independent advisory board on the fundamental principles of official statistics. Just very quickly, before I give the floor with the first question to our esteemed uh, panelists, we will have a certain number of celebrations during the 55th session of the Statistical Commission. Remember, 30 years ago, they were endorsed by the UN Statistical Commission, and 10 years ago, they were endorsed by the UN General Assembly. So on the Monday seminar, that will happen Monday afternoon, 26th of February, the day before the official opening of the conference, uh, uh, the, 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 um, the Statistical Commission, sorry, uh, we will have a special event called or titled Empowering Official Statistics, Upholding the Fundamental Principles to Stay Relevant. 
With that, I'm done with my introduction and we can go to the questions to the panelists. My first question is actually to Jean-Louis Baudin. Jean-Louis, uh, as one of the founders of the FPOS, as mentioned before, could you share with us the context and the genesis of these fundamental principles of official statistic? We would definitely be interested in hearing about this beautiful journey. Jean-Louis, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Uh, as you said, the announcement of the FPOS in uh, 1994 by the special session of the UN Statistical Commission was the culmination of a long journey that started, in fact, in 1989. Uh, 1989 was marked by many events in Central and Eastern Europe, among others, for instance, the victory of Solidarność in the legislative elections in Poland, in, it was in June, and the fall of the Berlin Wall in November. Uh, these countries decided to start the transition to a democratic system and a market economy. It was for them a huge challenge. And it was also a challenge for statistical offices. It was not so easy to face it and gain the indispensable trust of the public. Uh, statistical offices were looking for new references, new landmarks to serve as a framework in which to fulfill their duties. Such references were maybe not so different from the strictly technical point of view, but totally different where the concept itself of the role of statistics in the society was concerned. They recognized that economic and social statistics should be both legitimate and credible. In February 1990, during a consultation of the Conference of, Statistician of European Statisticians uh, organized by the president, by its president, Carlo Malguera, the head of the Polish delegation, Joseph Lenski, proposed to prepare a statistical convention. In June 1990, the session of the CES created a working group, which had to prepare a document in the form of a resolution, insisting on fundamental principles, more than on technical tools. And it was, uh, they asked to present the resolution in the form of 10 commandments. The resolution was adopted by the next session of the CES in June 1991. And uh, while endorsing the document, the CES decided to ask to its bureau to present it for adoption by one of its parent bodies, uh, the UN Economic Commission for Europe. The, the 47th session of the UN ECE warmly welcomed it in April 1992 and endorsed the FPOS in its decision C45. 47. The resolution therefore became a political decision of the UNEC and not only a text adopted by the CES. Uh, for me, having participated in the drafting of the, of the FPOS alongside Joseph Lensky was for me one of the most exciting episodes of my professional career and a real human adventure. You may find more details on this adventure in the publication 50 Years of the CES, published by the UNEC in 2003. And to access this, to just enter into Google or another search engine, 50 Years of the Conference of European Sessions, and you reach it very easily. That's all for the moment. You are muted, Gabriel. Jean-Louis, a follow-up question. I mean, uh, thank you very much. I mean, you noted that the FPOS were developed and endorsed by the Conference of European Statistics in 1991, endorsed by UN political level, and then globalized. How did these principles come to be acknowledged as universal from a European context to a global context? And the following question is that, are they still relevant today? Thank you very much, Gabriel, for this question. 
Uh, after the endorsement of the principles by the UNEC, the next session of the CES in June 1992 was of the opinion that this, this decision is of universal significance. It expressed the wish that the decision be communicated to the UN Statistical Commission and to the other UN regional commissions. At this point, we must pay a tribute to William Becher, who was at that time director of the Central Statistical Office in the Netherlands and also chairperson of the working group of the UN Statistical Commission on the International Statistical Programs and Coordination. It was a complicated name, but it was the name. Uh, William Becher became the, spokes, the spokesperson for the idea that the FPOS had a universal value, although they were written by, in a very specific context of the transition of the countries of Central and Eastern Europe. The four other UN regional commissions were contacted to circulate the principles to all countries of the region, of their regions, and to obtain their opinions concerning the relevance of the principle at the regional and global level. 61 countries replied, all of them but, but two agreeing with the 10 principles, which means that with the 45 members countries, member countries of the UNEC, more than 100 UN member countries were in favor of the relevant principles. And in this condition, the working group decided to submit the principles to a special session of the UN Statistical Commission held in April 1994, with just some amendments to the preamble only, not to the principle, in order to delete any reference to the urban context. And so the FPOS were, there, were adopted at the global level in April 1994. You ask if the hard FPOS is still relevant today. In my opinion, it's obvious. By very definition, principles are intangible. After all, if you allow me such a comparison, the Decalogue given by God to Moses on the Mount Sinai uh, 3,500 3, years ago has become an intangible basis for all the humanity. But since then, millions and millions of pages have been written around the world to popularize, explain, and interpret this text. That is what we need to do with the FPOS. Eventually, even if the question has been raised two or three times within our community, the Statistical Commission acknowledged in 2011 that the FPOS were still relevant today, as they had been in the past, and that no revision of the principles themselves was necessary. Just recommended an update of the preamble. Uh, so in 2013, uh, the Statistical Commission recommended to the UN Economic and Social Council the adoption of a draft resolution on, on the principles, and the Council endorsed them in July uh, 2013. In portion to the recommendation of the Economic and Social Council, the representative of Hungary, together with uh, 48 co-sponsors, introduced a draft resolution on this matter, at the 68th session of the UN General Assembly that endorsed the FPOS with exactly the same 10 principles as the ones adopted in 1991 by the CES. Jean-Louis, I mean, they, we, we, have, we went now through the journey. Thank you very much to so the journey of the fundamental principles of official statistics, but we also know that these principles have been in a way translated into various code of good practices and charters at regional and sometimes also at national levels. Could you explain briefly, in order to give also enough time to the other panelists, could you explain briefly the difference between the fundamental principles or the complementarity mm -hmm. so, and these various codes at regional and national levels? Uh, I do not say that the principles were translated into codes. The, the, the FPOS inspired a lot of codes of good practices. <clears throat> in fact, if, uh, principles provide a point of reference for stakeholders in statistical ecosystems, both producers and users. <clears throat> with many countries have introduced the reference to these principles in their legislation. 
they made it possible to provide the basis for comments and discussions, and therefore, and therefore to better fight against behaviors or actions contrary to the ethics of our profession. However, they do not provide practical tools to respond to their violations. Codes of good practices have therefore been prepared to provide such tools and enable responses in such cases, particularly on a legal level. They propose a guide to official statistical institutions to produce quality statistics and increase transparency in statistical systems. Often, such codes have been prepared to solve some major problems encountered in statistical practice. It was the case, for instance, in 2005 with the European Statistics Code of Practice, prepared following the problems of monetary and financial statistics in Greece. Uh, so, uh, as I said before, the principles are and must remain intangible. The codes can, on the contrary, evolve. For instance, the European and British codes have been subjects of uh, some revisions. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Louis. I mean, and we will go further on that because we also discussed, I mean, why, I mean, the implementation guidelines are actually the, the elements that gives flexibility to the interpretation of the fundamental principles, even though they remain intangible. Halgrimer, um, at last year's session, the UN Statistical Commission endorsed the principle of establishing an independent advisory board for the fundamental principles of official statistics. You have worked with UNSD in preparing the terms of reference for this board, and I would like to you to reflect on the reasons or your opinion why the Commission suggested setting up such a body. Thank you, Gabriel, and good morning, afternoon or evening, everyone. Yes, uh, <clears throat> at this last as its sessions last year, the Statistical Commission endorsed the proposal to establish an independent advisory board for the fundamental principles. I believe the main reasons for this were that uh, despite various actions during recent years to promote and monitor the implementation of the principles, there still is a need to increase awareness of the principles in many parts of the world and respond to insufficient compliance of, with them. Hence, the proposal to establish a new instrument, the board, in order to encourage, guide and support implementation where that is needed. Thus, the Commission is taking the opportunity presented by the anniversaries of the fundamental principles to underscore the importance for official statistics worldwide of having and fully and faultlessly implementing the principles by establishing such a special board as an additional vehicle of support. The Original proposal and now proposed terms of reference focus on raising awareness of the principles and their importance as basis for official statistics. They focus on communicating with agencies and authorities on promoting and implementing the principles and on providing guidance and support in this respect. Also, the proposals emphasize that the boards shall be independent and communicate directly and independently with agencies and authorities. At the same time, the board will be accountable to the Statistical Commission and report regularly to the annual sessions of the Commission. Thank you very much, Halgrimur, um, for this uh, quick overview of the terms of reference that are going to be submitted to the, uh, to the 55th session of the Statistical Commission. Can you tell us more, because I think that point is important, about the board's uh, intended purpose, but maybe a little bit more on how it might add value to the existing framework? Okay, yes. Well, according to the proposed terms of reference, the key responsibilities of the board will be awareness raising and advocacy, supporting implementation and compliance, identifying and addressing cases of non-compliance, ensuring the implementation guidelines are updated, and reporting and communicating to the Commission on its activities, findings and recommendations, as well as engaging in dialogue with relevant national and, and regional stakeholders. 
I believe the board may in particular add value to the existing system by emerging as a new and substantial vehicle designated to strengthen the application of the fundamental principles, identify weaknesses in compliance, and address non-compliance and insufficient or faulty implementation. The board's strength, I believe, will lie in its independence and in impartiality, allowing it to cooperate with and communicate with national, regional and international agencies in the field of official statistics and with national authorities. I also think that the board strength, board strength will lie in its professional nature and authority, composed as it will be of a diverse group of high-level independent and experienced professionals in official statistics and related fields. Yeah, so, I mean, we tick the boxes, right? You remember, because you were also part of some of them, that during the broad consultation rounds that we had, a strong focus was on effectiveness, independence, sure. yep. and accountability. And these elements, you are telling us that these elements are reflected actually properly in the proposed terms of reference. Well, that's the intention. Uh, that's the intention. <laughs> People may well then disagree to what extent we have succeeded in in in, in including that. Or, but uh, anyway, regarding effectiveness, the terms or reference lay down that the board can engage in direct communication with national agencies and authorities, and work alongside the UNSD, UN regional commissions, and UN resident coordinator offices as well as regional and international agencies, drawing on their information and enlisting their cooperation or offering cooperation. Also, it is envisaged that the board will hold, hold remote meetings as a rule, which should act for efficiencies in its, in its activities. Now, as for independence, which you asked about, the terms of reference spell out the board is an independent and impartial body. This means that the board operates independently, independently of its establishing body, so to speak, communicates directly, and gives guidance and recommendations in an independent fashion. I believe that while the board will work with the UNSD and other regional and international bodies, that its independent status will provide a certain arm's length effect in its dealings with national agencies and authorities. But while independent, the board must be accountable for its activities and recommendations. Everybody needs to be accountable for everything, as you know. This is ensured by having the board accountable to the Statistical Commission through regular reporting to the Commission. The terms of reference also emphasize that the activities of the board shall be open and transparent. It should be also be noted that the terms of reference stipulate that the Commission is responsible for reviewing the performance and effectiveness of the board, and that the first such review shall take place two years after the installment of the board, but thereafter every four years. Thank you very much, uh, Halgrimur, uh, for this uh, this information. So it means that actually the terms of reference that will be submitted and the way the board will work will be reviewed regularly and yes. the first time already after two years that gives a little bit of period for the board to find really the the ideal way of communicating and working uh, externally and internally. Thank you very much. Um, let's go now to uh, thank you Halgrimer. Let's go now to to Nora and, and Jimena. I don't know who wants to answer that but uh, UNSD was uh, tasked last year with re revitalizing the fundamental principles of official statistics implementation guidelines. You have been both involved in developing the commented outlines for two guidelines. Could you share the rationale being behind this approach? Why from one guidelines are we going to two guidelines? We should start. <laughs> Do I? I thought you okay. discussed that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Gabrielle, and good morning and afternoon to everyone. Um, 
Maybe I would like to start just by reinforcing that what was mentioned by Jean-Louis and Hilgrimor in, in the sense that the fundamental principles of official statistics are really at the heart of the of a country's official statistics today. And obviously, these principles has to be put into practice in the daily work of statistical institutions or entities and by taking into account the new challenges and opportunities we are facing today that in turn uh, strongly increase the need for official statistics. And so on the side of the challenges, we, we know we are facing an increasing demand for more granular statistics with greater accuracy and timeliness uh, for statistics that respond to new phenomena, such as the pandemic, which is still present, climate change or climate crisis, new economic and social crises, like massive migration, for instance. Sadly, today also wars and its impact. Um, but on the side of the opportunities, we have today a variety of new sources of information. We always speak about uh, big data and we are increasingly using administrative data, which is part of this big data. And we have new tools for accessing, processing and disseminating data and official statistics. So just by thinking in this context that makes the fundamental principles absolutely relevant today and probably more uh, than before. It makes sense to update or revitalize the fundamental principles implementation guidelines. And so we have today um, already guidelines dated from 2015 that have been complemented by supplementary modules, which are very useful, uh, but have become a little bit too extensive and the optimum would be to have a very practical and precise implementation guideline. And so if you want to be practical and precise, this also implies defining very well to whom the recommendation should uh, be oriented. And in that sense, we can think of these two groups. On one hand, the producers of official statistics and on the other hand, the policy makers and other key actors. And so then regarding producers of official statistics, it would be very interesting to try to align the fundamental principles to their areas of, on one side, strategic and corporate management, and on the other side, with the statistical production process. The rationale for that would be to make the fundamental principles visible at all level of the statistical organization or entity so that the implementation guideline can provide them with tools and so that each person in their scope of action could do their best to ensure that these fundamental principles are complied with in order to do this uh, separate um, analysis. Uh, when looking at the strategic and corporate management, we could use the analysis by following the GAMSO model, the generic activity model for a statistical organization. And when by when referring to the statistical production process, we can follow the GSBPM, the generic statistical bureau, uh, a statistical business process model. So for Jimena, instance, can I start you the... just quickly now? Yes. yes. Uh, thank you very much. Yes, that was course. actually a, yes. a, 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 a following question I want you to explain a little bit one more uh -huh. why GSPPM and GAMSO but you mentioned just because I opened the question for you to you and, and, and Nora so give also the opportunity to Nora to say a few words. Jimena mentioned two implementation guidelines one for the producers of official statistics and the other one I would say for the stakeholders could you on your side, Nora, explain a little bit more because you have been in charge to think about this one for the stakeholders. Could you specify who these stakeholders are outside the producer of official statistics and how they might contribute to the implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics? You are muted, Nora. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, Thanks. I'm, I'm glad that Timena has really highlighted the reason, the justification behind um, us coming up with the two uh, versions of implementation uh, guidelines for the fundamental principles. And uh, as you, she did mention, we are addressing two different key actors, and uh, those are producers and the users of statistics. And I must say that uh, unlike the policymakers that we already used too, we do mention other stakeholders 
And um, I wish to, to point out that uh, these include the civil society organizations. We have the private sector, the academia, and the media, if like. And all of these use and can provide uh, invaluable feedback, feedback on the satisfaction of the statistic, official statistics that are being uh, availed by uh, the different producers. And uh, more specifically, the civil society organizations and, uh, and the private sector, for example, are users of official statistics. They're also producing new data. This is one of the, the actors that has come into the space of uh, data production and would definitely be affected by the fundamental principle uh, guidelines. And uh, they can play a key role in the adoption and advocacy for adherence to the fundamental principles of official statistics. The other category is the academia. Uh, who are also users of the data and also statistics training institutions and research entities. These ensure that data sets are compliant. They can ensure that they are compliant as long as they are, um, they've got the implementation uh, very tools and also they can be able to provide feedback on the quality of the data, the extent of access to the data and also ensure that uh, they can also trace the availability of that data following the fundamental principle of official statistics. The other set is the media. Um, while they may be users, I think they could play a much more stronger role in the visibility of the different actors in the statistics in implementing of the guidelines. Um, and that is the policymakers and the national statistics officers, delineating the roles of each one of them in terms of uh, realizing the, the expectations from the fundamental principles of official statistics. Thank you very much, Nora. If I go a little bit further, I mean, like you, you mentioned and you can tell us a little bit more because you are, you are also co-drafting this, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the guidelines for uh, our stakeholders. What could be or what are the arguments that might persuade policymakers, policy like focusing now on policymakers, to support the FBOS or support the implementation of the FBOS? And how can we involve them in this endeavor? How can we make them motivated to help us to implement the fundamental principles of official statistics? Well, I think, thank you, um, I, Gabriel. Um, the arguments that might persuade policymakers to support the fundamental principles of official statistics are one, to uphold and protect uh, the principles of official statistics in the different national statistical system, which would help to ensure integrity, authority, and viability of statistical agencies on addressing some of the inconsistencies between the principles and other tools and frameworks like the fundamental, the code of practice and the law, the statistics laws. The other one would be on the legal and operational frameworks that would lead to the production of trustworthy statistics, uh, because these would help um, in protect identifying and highlighting the independence and objectivity, as well as transparency of such corporations. Um, they would also help in uh, addressing the issue of having an enabling environment for statistic, for official statistics production, like financial resources and human resource allocation, for example. Um, the other argument that could also come through is on the interpretation, their role in ensuring that interpretation and use of official statistics is effectively uh, actually addressed in the whole process of uh, policy development and, uh, and decision making. So what I see coming through is that their statistical histories must be enhanced in this regard for them to increase uh, their capacity to analyze data, to interpret the data and use it for, for purposeful, um, objectively developed uh, decisions. Um, the other part that I think would be very, very key was would be on the argument would be promoting trust in official statistics among society. While they have not been doing this as the, at the forefront, now with the fundamental principles, it comes very, very pertinent for them to play that role of promoting the trust in official statistics in society. Uh, this would trigger demand, and uh, I believe it would also cement collaboration between the producers of statistics and the users. And it would also enable to drive the improvement of official statistics processes. It would promote safeguards and also cooperation uh, amongst them.
Um, in respect to how this can this can be achieved, um, we would like to see, for example, um, the policymakers in being involved in advocacy, uh, advocacy advocating for the fundamental principles of visual statistics, demanding for enactment and enforcement of the statistical laws and policies, the codes of practice, just to make sure that they can um, trigger appropriate independence objectivity and transparency of uh, statistical operations. They can also be involved by uh, um, engaging in meaningful and uh, collaborative engagements with the national statistics uh, offices at strategic level. So this could help us to be able to, could help in handling new data sources, addressing issues of confidentiality, and, uh, and also addressing the trust in the relationship that they have to make sure that whatever is produced is can be comparable across the, the across time and they can be able to sit and agree as data steward and then those that are actually using the data. Um, the other one is on engaging the policymakers in statistical communication and advocacy. And this would mean that they would work towards ensuring the use of the uh, adequate use of data and promoting user feedback and uh, continuous improvement of official statistics. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nora. We will have to think about the title of that specific implementation guidelines, right, for the stakeholders, because we will have to go also through promotion and explain to them as data providers or as users, mm -hmm. what are their interests in promoting mm -hmm. the fundamental principles of official statistics? Because, mm -hmm. I mean, originally they are not there to protect first the statisticians they are there to protect actually the users and the data providers but we are producing the information so actually we're in between and we are implementing them so thank you very much uh, Nora on that and we will come back on the legislation and SES because I think that's a very important point Jimena you started with that and now I come back to you I mean you mentioned that uh, these implementation guidelines actually the set that will be um, 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 uh, designed for uh, statisticians, for producers of official statistics that are going to follow actually the structure of GSPPM and GAMSO. Can you can can you tell us a little bit more about what is GAMSO and GSPPM rather shortly, but then also what is the advantage of following this structure for the implementation guidelines? Yeah, um, well, uh, the, the idea is that each person, as, as I said before, each person in the statistical organization or entity realized that by having a, a role at some stage, say on the production process or in the more strategic area, they all they also have a role in the implementation of the fundamental principles. And so we can provide them with tools for that. The, and then the, the generic, the GAMSO model, the generic activity model cover all the activities that occurs within a statistical organization, at, say a typical one, and it uses a standard terminology and common structure. So for all of the statistical institutions is, is something rather um, familiar, even if it's not that formalized sometimes. In general terms, the GAMSO has a strategic and corporate dimension and also a statistical production process dimension. And in fact, this last one, the production process, is the generic statistical business process model. So sometimes we speak about GAMSO GSBPM. Uh, and of course, on the strategic corporate dimension, you have uh, strategic definitions and planning, um, managing collaboration, cooperation, um, capability development, corporate support, which you can relate to principles like one, eight, nine, and some others. And on the GSBPM part, you need all those, you have all the stages for the purely statistical production, starting by specifying the needs, um, design the instrument, build it, collect, process, analyze, disseminate, and getting feedback. So for each of the main stages, you could also link them uh, to the fundamental principles in order to see how better implement them or to be aware in case there is uh, uh, some risk or challenge posed there. And so that's the idea of following this very generic uh, structure, but is familiar to, to, to many institutions 
direct, uh, even if it's not that formalized, I should say, uh, in order to be more precise, as I was saying before, um, and practical on the guidelines for implementing the, the principles. Thank you very much, Jimena. So are you telling us that uh, GAMSO is actually a model about uh, the management of the strategy, the corporate and the logistic, and this is of course in the hands of the, the management, middle, senior, uh, chief statisticians, uh, and and of course uh, uh, the the fundamental principles, the challenges, but also how to secure their implementation should be reflected according to this uh, to this model. And then there is a more operational model that is the model of the production of statistics step by step, and to identify actually which fundamental principle, which principle is actually at risk, and how to mitigate this risk step by step through the GSPPM. It's interesting that you mentioned that actually, and sometimes maybe the, it has been a little bit a failure in the past, that I'm saying in general, uh, is that the fundamental principles is not only for the managers. The fundamental principles are also there for the staff involved in the daily production of statistics, correct? Right, right, absolutely. And I still I have to say that it is very important that the chief statisticians or the directors uh, or the high level management teams adhere, strongly adhere to the to the principles because this send a strong message to the rest of the institutions. And also one would expect that this implied that would, they would make all possible effort in order to get the necessary resources for the statistical activity. But it is not enough to be that only the higher uh, directive team uh, adheres to the principles. We also need the technical, the operational staff, because in their daily decisions, they 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 have to they have to always have present the importance of of um, complying with the principles. And sometimes people like, for instance, on the communication or dissemination area, sometimes they are not they do not feel that they are involved that much in the production process, but they are equally important. For instance, when providing access to the information and they have to be aware of the importance of the simultaneous and the impartial uh, way of communicating the statistics. And they also have to, to be aware of safeguarding confidentiality and of reserve information. So at the end, the message is that all have a very important role to play and we need to provide them with the tools for that. Thank you very much. And I see that uh, Steve, Steve Vale actually has shared the link to GAMSO and GSPPM for those uh, that do not know uh, these uh, models. I think that's uh, that's that's good. Thank you very much, Steve. Um, very quickly, because we want all the panelists to have time to answer the questions and then to have a bit of time for a discussion. But I mean, you have mentioned both, Nora and Jimena, you have mentioned both that there are other or there are strategic tools now or, or infrastructure that could effectively leverage the implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics. Can you tell us a little bit more? I think if I understood correctly, it was the law and also the NSDS. I don't know, Jimena, maybe you want to take the law? Yeah, uh, well, um, it, it is a very strategic element and it could be a major facilitator for the fundamental principles implementation, the legal, uh, the statistical legal framework. And by that, I'm not only referring to the statistical law, <coughs> but to other laws that can either directly or indirectly influence the statistical activities. And so we, we, we have different scenarios. We have, for instance, the very new laws. Uh, some of them have been updating in the last 10 years. And for them, one would expect that they incorporate the principles, um, ideally the fundamental principles. And because in, in part, these principles allow us to distinguish uh, the official statistics, the statistics that are official from those that are not, uh, but it's not not but, but it's, that is not only it's not sufficient in terms of having just the principles. What is also important is that in the rest of the articles of the law, you also uh, the, the law is also explicit on those other characteristics that arise from the principles, like the professional independence, statistical confidentiality, the quality of official statistics with all that in involves. And so it, it's, it could be the legal framework, a very important facilitator, but it has to be complete. And even if those two conditions are met, we still need to monitor because we know that sometimes the law says something and the implementation says another thing. 
But this is for the newer laws. And then for the older laws, which sometimes have more than 30 years, and it's not obvious that they will be updated, uh, they might include, uh, they might not include these matters. And for those cases, uh, secondary regulations or codes of good practices, or even other non-statistical legislations, but that have an impact on the statistical activity, might become more relevant. And among those, you can find, for instance, the Transparency Law, the Personal Data Protection Act, sometimes sectoral laws, and uh, lately regulations on new issues like cybersecurity or the whole discussion on artificial intelligence regulation and so on. And so the 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 message at the end is that it is important, the, the legal framework, it is important uh, that do not impose obstacles to the statistical activity uh, by being, say, in contradiction with the fundamental principles. And so it is important to monitor the entire regulatory framework that might have a possible impact on the statistical activity. Thank you very much, Jimena. I think it's very important also to, that you mention not only, of course, the, the, the national statistical legislation that must be updated when it's old, right? I mean, it's not only a, a question of complementing it, but also needs to be revised from time to time. But the, I would say the, the set of, of, of rules and regulations about data and statistics within a country should also, to some extent, uh, support the implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics. And the first one is not to contradict the fundamental principles of official statistics. If we get already that, we have done a lot of progress there. Now, very quickly also, Nora, thank you very much, Jimena. Nora, about the NSDS, I know that you have been working in, in many countries, mainly in Africa, on developing a national strategies for the development of statistics. How can we incorporate these fundamental principles and make sure that uh, during the development of, of statistics and statistical infrastructure, I mean, that we respect and we implement these principles. Uh, yeah, thank you. That is one of the avenues uh, through which we can really drum the, the importance of the guidelines that are coming through and also the recognition of uh, the fundamental principles. I must say that national strategies for the development of statistics um, are, are an invaluable framework or platform for us to elaborate the fundamental principles of official statistics uh, and their the implementation guidelines. Uh, to date, most countries that have got national strategies for the development of statistics, in Africa, about 80% now of the countries have developed NSDSs. And I must say, they do articulate the fundamental principles. However, the way it's been captured has been through uh, identifying whether they've got the statistical legislation, the data quality assessment frameworks, coordination, user engagement. So the principles have kind of been already elaborated. However, they have not been captured under the fundamental principle guidelines as it is now. What I see coming through now is the need for us to have um, an objective, a clear objective, on the implementation of the fundamental principle of official statistics guidelines. And I think this will be important for us to have it more explicitly and ensure that they can be enforced within defining the role of the national statistics office leadership at strategic level and then at operational level for staff and then other ministries and departments and agencies that have got sector statistics. In addition, I see the objective also having some uh, interventions from the policy perspective where we are going to see the role of the policymakers and other stakeholders being defined more explicitly in terms of how they can contribute, how they can uh, trigger the implementation of fundamental principles of social statistics, bearing in mind the, the factors that I mentioned earlier in terms of the role they can play and how they can be actually supported to make sure they play a significant role in all this, because the fundamental principles are shared between the producers and the users of statistics. So this is going to be an opportunity uh, of now redefining um, the fundamental principle of social statistics much more clearer than what it has been before and make reference to the different principles and how they can be promoted. Thank you very much, yeah. Nora. Thank you. Um, 
I don't know if uh, if 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 Rimena, you want to add something there. No, if not, we go to for the next question to uh, Sharjah. Uh, maybe you can switch on your camera, Sharjah. Yes, uh, very nice. Uh, as the director of the Statistical Institute for Asia and the Pacific, SIAP, as we mentioned before, could you maybe start by saying a few words about SIAP to the audience? I mean, so that they understand what it is. Yes, Gabriel, thank you. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, participants. Um, it's really a pleasure for me to be here. And uh, I was listening very carefully to all the panelists. And uh, I feel that, you know, maybe in the subsequent questions, many of the things will be related. But before that, let me uh, speak a few words about a few sentences about the Institute. So the United Nations Statistical Institute for Asia and Pacific is actually a training arm of the Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific, that is the SCAP. And it is a professional statistics training center for the government officials and others working on official statistics. SIAP offers short-term trainings and one long-term specialized training to strengthen knowledge and build skills of national governments uh, statisticians to produce, use, and share reliable statistics, and including for the monitoring of the SDGs. So basically, currently, uh, SIAP is concentrating on trainings for SDGs along with some other trainings also. And our various training programs and courses as well as training uh, activities include methods of official statistics, statistical business process, and specialized domains of social, population, gender, economic, agricultural and environment statistics. And uh, the focus uh, areas actually, how, how we decide on our trainings, they are prioritized in accordance with various UN, UN mandates, the SCAP Committee on Statistics and SCAP Strategic Directions, and determined in consultation with SCAP member and associate member states and regional and global statistics development partners. So we continuously keep uh, in touch with our member states. We also conduct a training uh, needs assessment survey year on year. So kind of uh, taking into account the priorities of the UN, the SCAP, the statistics committee, along with our member states, we do design our courses. And the Institute has a governing council. And of course, you know, for uh, um, endorsing the work plan, etc. And uh, this is broadly about the Institute. Yeah. Thank you very much. That's uh, really interesting, uh, Shaja. L on, beyond that, uh, and I was also a participant actually, but last December, SIAP and Statistics Malaysia hosted a management seminar on the FPOS, on the principles. What's the purpose of these seminars in general? Uh, but I mean, more specifically, what is your takeaway from the last event on the principles that we had in Malaysia? It was in December. Yes, thank you, Gabriel, and uh, let me thank you officially for really supporting that seminar and adding value to it. So basically, uh, the management, the institute uh, um, holds management seminar every year, and the, man the objective of the management seminar actually is to strengthen the statistical capacity in leadership and management in support of economic and social development. It is also a forum through which the heads of national statistical offices in Asia and the Pacific can identify, discuss, and propose common solutions or at least pointers and ideas for coping with rapidly changing environment in which they operate. And as the milestone for the 30th anniversary of the endorsement of principles approaches in 2024, which we are already in, the Statistical Institute for Asia and Pacific and of course, in collaboration with the statistics division of SCAP, we selected this topic on strengthening official statistics through the implementation of the official uh, fundamental principles of official statistics as its focus for the 18th management seminar, as Gabriel was already saying. And uh, uh, like a very interesting uh, uh, takeaways were there. We can, I'll not be discussing all of them in the consideration of time. It's already a little late, but still some of the things uh, were very interesting. So basically the fundamental principles of official statistics, even after 30 years and 10 years stand tall. And this is what 
all the uh, member states from the Asia Pacific region who were present there, they, this is what they felt. So uh, regarding the implementation, the extent of implementation in the countries and in the Asia Pacific region, the fundamental principles are still the guiding principles that ensure official statistics uh, meet higher standards of quality, relevance and integrity. And if, uh, the principles remain as relevant now as they were when they were adopted 30 years ago. Of course, you know, the extent of implementation and the reasons why they are not being implemented in totality, we were discussing also for the last one year or for the last one hour in the seminar and they are there. But still the importance of these principles cannot be kind of overlooked. And there is a strong evidence of the emphasis placed on uh, the principles and full on integration implementation of the principles in the work of NSO. And despite the commitment to adhering to the principles, there are challenges that continue to hinder the implementation, including statistical capacity, budget and statistical legislation as we were talking. And uh, we had a session on the strategies to create awareness about the principles. And the two main takeaways along with others were that adherence to the principles should not be limited to selected actors with the NSOs only. Uh, this was also just now being discussed, but should be a responsibility of all the NSO staff and also the line ministries departments also because the national statistical offices are not the only centers where statistics is being generated and uh, used and administered. It has to extend to all the line ministries departments who are producing the statistics and fostering an appreciation understanding of the principles is critical in avoiding breaches of the principles and ensuring sustained and consistent application of the principles all of which are essential for continuous production and use of official statistics while maintaining the credibility of the statistical offices. And we also had a session on how can we help each other. This, this session was in implementing the principles. This session was very well taken and I'll just give some brief uh, highlights of this. Uh, there was that other uh, NSOs can support each other in the implementation of uh, the fundamental principles. And they said that technical support, sh sharing methodologies and legislations, which can be replicated, providing support with networking and cost sharing through partnerships with international organizations. How they, they then, you know, we just wanted to know how ESCAP can support them. And <clears throat> that was on advising on the text of new statistical legislation and supporting the process by informing rest of the government on the importance of legislation, as well as lobbying with decision makers, <coughs> continue supporting the statistical offices with the conduct of global assessments, reviews of statistical systems, and the reviews help uh, with educating non-NSO agencies about the principles. Of course, developing guidelines or providing advice on data sharing and using a SCAP session for annual meetings on the fundamental principles as an opportunity to be in touch with high level officials. And of course, <coughs> they also had suggestions on DESA, UNSD supporting the implementation uh, and use of these principles and also the regional organizations because some of the regions like our Pacific region, they do need some special support. So probably uh, we have the regional organizations for such uh, regions, that is the, say the Secretariat for the Pacific Community and they're probably creating an environment where there is greater awareness and knowledge of the principles for specialized regions and also countries with training institutes like our institute or maybe you know some institutes where international training institutes are there there also <coughs> the principles the training can be imparted there was also a, a very interesting uh, comment and outcome that parliamentarians should also be sensitized about these uh, principles as we were just now discussing and support the legislative reforms such as Statistics Act, the laws, advancing the national coordination, coordination that is essentially, I think, the principle eight, given their role in allocation of resources and facilitating regular interactions, such as setting statistical information kiosk for information sharing during parliamentary sessions. 
Of course, there was a role which was given to the academia and also the ISI that how, you know, they can kind of uh, uh, assist NSOs when there was there is any political interference and probably there were some cases earlier. So it was in respect to that. And uh, uh, probably the most important session was uh, which Gabriel supported was the was guided by the by his presentation in particular the establishment of an independent advisory board to advocate for FPOS and participants were invited with certain questions that is what are the activities the board should take care of and that is they were they the common challenges the complete review of non-compliance of the principles non-compliance report Support NSO if there are issues of FPOS implementation that cannot be handled at national level. This is very important. Board members can visit countries and provide guidance on the implementation of the principles, undertake critical thinking assessment of the principles, and use results to develop guidelines and reflect best practices. And why, what should not be contained in the TORs? The countries felt that it should not have a very bureaucratic setup. It should not duplicate roles already undertaken by other existing bodies. And TOR should not include provisions that do not influence, interfere with professional independence of NSOs. Should not give scores rank countries based on implementation because, you know, then uh, probably countries will be a little uh, defensive. And uh, there are many such comments. So, yeah. And then uh, probably there were uh, what should be included in the implementation guidelines. Some of them were just now discussed also. Uh, principles are invaluable to guide professional work and should be more forward looking and innovative. How to make NSO more progressive. Guidelines on to distinguish between big data and admin data require more data integrate integration. And I'll not tell all of them because I think time is less. Uh, evaluation of implementation of FPOS, how to empower NSOs to access different data sources for official statistics, how to deal with misuse and misinterpretation of statistics, scope of statistical agency needs to be elaborated, and producers of admin data should be under the ambit of NSO. And in concluding, Substantive session participants were invited to openly share their learnings from the seminar, highlighting their main takeaways and actions to be taken upon their return to the office. And they all said that they all agreed that with the importance of the FPOS for their work in national statistical systems, they need to create awareness about these principles and effectively implement them. There was agreement that the independent advisory board proposed in the statistical commission should be set up with the suggested terms of reference. There was also a recommendation that the guidelines both for statistics professionals, policymakers should be developed separately to help in, in, in implementing the principles. And it was also suggested that international organizations should actively assist NSOs in implementation of the principle. UNSD and UNSCAP should pay and play an important role in creation of awareness amongst other parts of the governments by suitably taking relevant issues to the United Nations General Assembly and the SCAP Commission. And these are some of the recommendations which I have broadly uh, kind of highlighted. Thank you very much, Salja. And I hope, I mean, that in the future, you can tell us a bit more, but that in the future you will also create maybe or design new courses or curricula that will also help us, I mean, globally, but also at the, re at your, at the level of your region, that will help us to implement the fundamental principles of official statistics. I think it is obviously a priority, right? I mean, that's also the outcome of the event. Sure. Yes, yes, Gabriel, that is really an outcome of the event. And uh, you must have seen that in our work plan, we have not included that. But once we had this uh, uh, very successful seminar, we will have a series of webinars now, of course, with the support and partnership of the with of experts who are already present here. And maybe, you know, we will design a course and see what all has to be put there, the curricula, the contents of the course, and how, as and when the developments are there, how it has to be upgraded year on year. Yeah, 
and also uh, try to have webinars on the country practices and the extent of implementation of these uh, principles. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Saja. I, I, I was very interested and I, I really carefully listened to your reply because actually, of course, each region is different, right? And even Asia and Pacific is a huge region. So there are different contexts actually, even within your region. Yes. But yes. I have to say that what you just mentioned now on the outcome of the event that you have organized, CIAP has organized jointly with uh, Statistics Malaysia, it echoes rather well feedback we have received also from other events and round of yes. consultations that we had. I mean, when you say also this body should not be bureaucratic, we should work to 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 we, we have to to work according to what we call the the principle of subsidiarity. There are a couple of things that are better done at national or regional level than at global one, and we should not actually overlap each other. We have to work in a coordinated way, also with other uh, uh, scientific and professional organizations, international organizations. How Halgrimo mentioned it just before. So these elements are very important. You also noticed you mentioned the South South cooperation. There is a lot that can be done. Uh, you mentioned on the legislation, but there are also other domains where definitely actually countries can help each other within a region. I mean, to uh, better implement the fundamental principles of official statistics. So it's very, it's very interesting and I'm very happy that actually you are the last panelist to tell us a little bit quickly about what are these very important feedback that we have received from the country during a year of heavy consultations, right, that we, that we had uh, in, in all regions. And, and be sure, I mean, Shaja also, and, and you could see that, that these elements are, as Halgrimer mentioned before, are reflected in the terms of reference yes, for the yes. for the for the board, but will be also reflected in the implementation guidelines. As yes. Nora mentioned before, because she's also a specialist and she has been working on national quality assurance framework, I see here a question from uh, our our colleague, our colleague uh, Seb Hans Vigo. Uh, about the importance of national quality assurance framework in the implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics. That's not only to list them. I don't know, Clarence, if if you can could give the floor to to Hans Vigo very quickly. Hans Vigo, maybe not for a question because I understand what is behind your question, but you can maybe add a few words on the importance of national quality assurance framework for the proper implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics. Can uh, Hans Vigo have the floor? Clarence? Uh, I, did, I enabled the cameras and mic. Okay, Hans Vigo, I mean, you can go ahead. Hi. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you, I, I can't see myself, but. I, we can see you and we can hear you perfectly. Okay, okay. <laughs> then I take that for granted. No, I, I, I think I said what I, it was a more, rather provocative question, but and you started by, by mentioning this also, and several have touched upon it. So uh, it's, it's, I don't have very much more to say, but I would say that uh, uh, we have the same kind of, of uh, challenges for, with the uh, quality frameworks. Uh, they are, uh, I would say, uh, very much based on uh, on the fundamental principles but uh, they go a bit beyond of course and uh, and uh, so i i just feel that um, cooperation within the international statistical community is very important and to to draw upon all systems that that really exists there are also a, a, frame, a quality framework for asian countries for example uh, that's just what I, I I I admit this was provocative, but <laughs> I I just wanted to to raise raise the question. So uh, when you go ahead, I think uh, uh, this uh, this independent board could be a good idea just to to, to emphasize on the word independence. Uh, yeah. uh, but they should overlook maybe more than that. Of course, they should also look at the use of. of um, that's what just an idea I got now when I heard you. Yes, thank you very much, Hans Vigo. I, I think we 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 mentioned the, the national quality assurance framework very quickly, but 
on top, uh, Jean-Louis mentioned the code of practices and, and different charters, but I mean, the national quality assurance framework, they go even further, right? And they are very important in terms of the implementation of the fundamental principles of official statistics. And they have also to be well communicated, not only to the producer of official statistics, but the advantages also for the users that they are properly implemented. By implementing these quality assurance framework, we also implement indirectly the fundamental principles of official statistics. And this is maybe something that is also interested for interesting. I mean, even though we discussed it already with Nora and Jimena, but something that must be reflected in the implementation guidelines fundamentally. Yes, I don't know if you, I mean, uh, panelists would like to add something on, on the importance of the of, of, of national quality assurance framework for the for the implementation of the fundamental principles. Don't be shy. Can, can I? Yeah, 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 Jimena, please. Yeah, I, I, I was very fast when um, mentioned the quality aspect, uh, but it certainly has to be, I mean, incorporated. And in fact, when we, when we think of the GSBPM model, we are also implicitly following the different stage, which in turn have different um, quality requirement. So the sole fact of having a well-defined process, and so you can address the uh, activities or subactivities eventually that might be challenged on uh, that might, I, I should say, pose a challenge for the fundamental principles, is an exercise in which you are combining quality and fundamental principles and a structure that already exists. So it's, it's not that we are reinventing any rule; it's, we are using what already exists in order to be more practical and more precise on the guideline. That that was also an idea. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I just wanted to say if someone else want to intervene, doesn't have to be for a question, but an intervention. I mean, please raise your hand and we are going to give you the floor. We have still something like 10, 10, 15 minutes for discussion. So I think that's something that uh, we can still do, right, uh, Clarence? Um, so just raise your hand. You have the, si the sign uh, hand. Raise your hand and we give you the floor. We had uh, an intervention here. I don't know if we need to give the, the floor to Marco Christoph. All good friends, I mean, <laughs> um, about, uh, about uh, but Marco, say a few words. Up to you. Okay, hello. So Hi, good morning, How are you? Good, e good day and good evening to all. Uh, thank you, I'm doing fine. So first of all, uh, uh, it's astounding that uh, the principles are still relevant even after 30 years, despite the fact that the world of official statistics has changed profoundly. And uh, so congratulations uh, to the authors. Uh, I believe that uh, it, uh, even though it was certainly difficult to, to draft them, that uh, it would be even more difficult to update them. So I uh, strong heartedly welcome uh, this approach of establishing an advisory, independent advisory board, which will uh, lead this uh, difficult task should the principles ever be uh, amended, changed or uh, strengthened. So um, thank you, Gabriel, for organizing this seminar and I uh, wish you all a uh, good and successful uh, uh, statistical commission this year. Thank you, Marco. Marco was the former, former Director General of Statistics Croatia uh, that some of us know. Jean-Louis, you have been uh, Amazing. I mean, not only you, but the team that drafted the fundamental principles, right? I mean, how it comes. <laughs> For example, the use. I mean, something that is is it it is interesting, and makes the fundamental principle extremely relevant, is that in the principle there is the principles on data sources, and the principle <clears throat> on data sources is quite clear. It has been translated into legislation also, saying. Don't use only censuses and survey to produce statistics. Look around mm -hmm. and try to use all quality available data sources, including, of course, administrative data. That's the first thing we have in mind, but there is much more nowadays to produce official statistics. So how, how it comes that at that time, I mean, in 1991, it was not so, I mean, for, for Nordic countries, it was different, of course, but for many countries, we were still not there, Jean-Louis.
Yeah, yes, you, you're right. The, the principal five uh, of the FPOS uh, insist on the fact we have not to use only the administrative uh, survey and uh, census data, but also uh, other sources. Of course, at that time, uh, we have no idea of uh, big data of, and, and, and other things. So we, we didn't mention, uh, but in fact, uh, all the sources that appeared in the, before between the, the, the 1994 uh, are included in this principle. So I don't think it is necessary to, to, to change something in, in, the, in the draft of this principle. Uh, okay. uh, maybe I, I would like to try something. The, the principles are, do not only concern the production of data. They are concerning all the phases of the statistical ecosystem. The preparation of, of uh, statistical programs, uh, the dissemination, the interpretation, the use by users, yeah. and uh, may, many breaches could appear in these other phases, not, not only in the production. So. Thank you very much, uh, Jean Louis. We have also Steve Penick uh, that raised his hand. I don't know if can we give the floor to Steve? Steve? I can you hear, can me? hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. And thanks for organizing the seminar and to the panelists for the discussion, which I found really, really very useful. Yes, the principles, I think, stand tall. And I think that's credit to Jean Louis and his colleagues for drafting something which has had such universal acceptance. But the issue really is with compliance, as Jean Louis has just been saying. And I'm pleased that the implementation guidelines are beginning to look like there's going to be a version for policy users because in my experience a lot of the issues have been in that area rather than with statisticians and something guided towards them to help them understand the importance of the principles is going to be really important so this is a really critical issue i think and i'm my congratulations also to those who've been drafting the terms of reference for this new board which can't have been an easy job um, it is actually a very challenging uh, draft that you've, you've, you're, you're giving the board um, six key responsibilities. And when I read them, I think, heavens, there's a lot here to be done. And I think that shows the importance of the work um, and the importance of the first year or two in actually setting up a, a means of doing this and setting up a work plan so that it's absolutely clear how the work is to be taken forward. So, I mean, I would simply emphasize, I think, um, uh, Gabriel, that um, the work hasn't stopped here with this seminar. This is very much a launch pad, I think, for work that's going to take place over the next few years. And I wish everybody uh, luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. And of course, the support of UNSD, right, for logistics and all other kind of secretariat activities is, is fundamental also for the, the board to, to function properly. This is an important point. Halgrim, maybe you want to mention something on that? No, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, you only confirm that these two first years will be crucial, right? I mean, in the way to shape really this board and, and, and start its activity. It's a challenge and the work is only starting. The TOR isn't actually, it was a challenge, but not too, too big, but it will be, it will be a, a challenge, of course, to, to make this, this, this board work to be efficient, independent, uh, <clears throat> and accountable. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, uh, our colleague from EC Eka, I mean, uh, and Jana, please. And then we go to Misha, and then I think after that, do we have more? And Jana, are you here with us? Very quickly, right? One minute. Anjana? If Anjana is not with us, then we can go to Misha. Hi, can you hear oh, me? Oh, Anjana, yeah, yeah, now I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Th thank you, Gabriel and the panelists Hi. for a very, very interesting uh, and very informative discussion. So my quick question, Gabriel, you have been with us and we have also been struggling with this role of NSOs as data stewards. So I'm bringing a slightly different context and would like to ask the panelists whether the TOR or there is some contemplation to extend the FPOs so that 
the NSOs can have a more specific role as data stewards also. So I'm not really elaborating the discussions we had, but I think you get a sense of my question. So would the board look into that aspect also? Because as we discussed, the FPOs do enable it, but there are a lot of challenges for the NSO. So if in the implementation framework, can that be supported? If so, when and how? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. I don't know who wants to answer that question. Jean-Louis, Hagemer, I mean, uh, is the board going to work beyond official statistics? I uh, I have questions there. I mean, I doubt, but I mean, uh, but I mean, uh, I don't know. I just know. Maybe Hagemer? Could I uh, just have a few words? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure that this is the right question. Will the board work beyond uh, official statistics? Because I think the demarcation lines in this respect mm -hmm. between official statistics and non-official statistics are quite blurred. Or the activities, they kind of... Uh, complement each other, they fall into each other, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are a lot of things in the fundamental principles that apply directly to uh, private statistical activities. And there are uh, on other cases, there are they apply indirectly to it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, for regarding data stewardships, etc., I cannot see that that should be in any how in any way excluded. It it is definitely one part of the things where the fundamental principles are absolutely applicable and should be implemented and complied with. So I I, I fail to see that there should, we should draw any kind of demarcation line between that and 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 the official statistics as such. Okay. Thank you very much, Halgrimer. I think uh, an important point here is that the fundamental principle makes official statistic distinctive from other data and statistics, but not exclusive. And not that, I think this is no. the difference, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not exclusive that, at all. Not exclusive exactly, at all. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the board should take yeah. this, of course, in mind in doing yeah. the work. We yeah. are using we are using extensively other sources, and we just discussed it, right? Other sources, and in particular administrative data in countries. I mean, uh, for the production of official statistics, Halgrimo is coming from a country since 50 years. You're doing that, right? I mean, it's nothing new. Uh, I mean, in using official, I mean, administrative data for the production of official statistics. Is that correct, Halgrimo? Yeah, yeah, that's that's of yeah. course correct. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I would like to say, Jean Louis. Of course, we knew about big data in those days. We simply didn't call it big data. <laughs> that, that, that's that's it. We we had such data, and we were using it, but but yeah. we didn't call it big data at the time. Okay. Yes, we didn't. Yeah. 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 Yes, and in the Nordic countries, you were already in a way managing or steering the public data system but you didn't call it data stewardship, no. right? No. So that's no. also the thing. And the same in France yeah. for business statistics that is strongly based on administrative data. Absolutely. I mean, you were already dealing, and this is exactly the question from Anja, right? Anja, uh, Anjana, I mean, you were already actually dealing with these other producers or, or, or providers of, of, of data, and, and this is a long tradition, but the word data stewardship, we didn't have it at that time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, maybe, but for the sake of for the sake of time, thank you very much, and Anj Jana, for this uh, for this question. I mean, it was very interesting. Also, I mean, uh, uh, for the for the for shaping this uh, this uh, the activities actually of this uh, of this uh, board. I I would go I would go now to I don't know who W G R is. I don't know if WGR is still here. Otherwise, we can go to Misha in the meantime. This is me. Ah, uh, Walter. Ah, Walter, okay. it's you. Okay, I didn't uh -huh. know. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, please, please, one minute. My my avatar. Uh, okay, thank you very much for the for the seminar. I found it very helpful and well balanced. Uh, very smart uh, speakers. Um, the, the only thing I wanted to emphasize, not to criticize, to emphasize uh, is uh, that maybe 
the discussion of the question whether the principles have to be amended or modernized is not in the, let's say, not, not the most important one. Um, I think the most important one for me is how to implement them. Um, and, and here, I think um, uh, we could learn uh, from the European way that I have also guided for a couple of years, uh, which is based on the TQM principles. This is uh, W.E. Deming and so forth. Um, and Deming would say um, we have, in principle, three ways to implement and all begin with an, uh, an E. Uh, it's enforcement, uh, it's empowerment, and it's evidence. And I think uh, we, we should uh, strive for a good balance between the three E's. And in particular, the, the last one, evidence, is of course a very difficult one, uh, because then we have this, uh, let's say, question of sovereignty, and um, how do you get evidence from countries which are in a very difficult situation and so forth. And I, and I think more, um, how to say, uh, exchange of good ideas in, in this respect uh, would certainly help also to have better evidence, uh, trustworthy evidence, uh, as industry would say. So a dynamic way of implementation less bureaucratic, less enforcement, more empowerment and more evidence. Thanks. Thank you very much, Walter. Thank you very much. For the three E, we'll take, we'll take this into account. <laughs> that, that's an important point, yes. Uh, uh, one, one thing I wanted to confirm, it was clear from the 50, from, from the, the 54 session of the Statistical Commission, but also from these extensive consultations that we had, that it is not about revising the principle they are still relevant the main issue that we had was the implementation so you put exactly your finger on that that's very very clear um uh, and and thank you for insisting on on, on that and and uh, and this came clearly also out from the events that we organized i mean uh, in in malaysia recently with CAP countries saying, yeah, I mean, the main issue is not to draft new principles, they are relevant, but what we have to do is to enforce them, to implement them properly. How many E? Yes, and, and evidence. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Walter. Thank you, it was a pleasure. And then the last one, I don't know, I mean, Misha had his hand up. We are a little bit like four minutes late, but we also started five minutes late. So Misha, if you, one minute for you, and then after that, I will ask the panelists if they want to add like, 30 second a word to, to conclude. Misha. We don't get Misha. Clarence, did you? I'm sure you did. Oh, Misha is here now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hello, and thank you very much for this uh, very, very interesting uh, uh, webinar. Uh, congratulations to all the speakers. Uh, but very briefly, I, uh, you know, I, I, it's very interesting. The idea of the advisory board is extremely interesting, uh, and I think it's very useful. Uh, the only thing I wanted to add that this advisory board should probably work um, quite close to um, such uh, such uh, establishments like uh, Krakow Working Group of IAOS, which is looking at the violations uh, of fundamental principle of official statistics, and another place which is which Walter, who is the chair of it, it didn't mention, which is the uh, ISI Advisory Board on Ethics, and probably um, we could offer. Uh, some services for that. We, I mean, the new um, uh, network which we're, uh, we are in the process of establishing, uh, which is supported by UNSD and IAOS, which is the f Friends of Official Statistics. I just wanted to mention that and I want to say the good luck to the new board. Thanks. Thank you very much, Misha. It was a pleasure to, to see and hear you. I mean, uh, maybe Halgrimo there want to say something? Thank you. Thank you, Misha. Uh, uh, the point for you, Paul, point, it's an important point you raise, and I, I thoroughly agree with you. And uh, it is taken care of in um, 
the um, in the uh, proposed terms of reference, where it is uh, uh, said that uh, the um, uh, the board is supposed to uh, engage actively in cooperation with uh, uh, associations like the IOS and the ISI and and so on and so forth. Yeah, so that is taken care of, and that's part of the of the thinking uh, <coughs> around this issue at all. Uh, yes. yes. Thank yes. you very much, Halgrimur. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is stipulated that actually yes. we are also yeah. working yeah. with professional yeah. organizations and associations. I mean, uh, uh, of course, there is a difference. I mean, the professional association, by definition, are professional associations. So you speak on behalf of the statisticians when uh, the independent advisory board will be a UN body, right? I mean, not only speaking to statisticians, but actually representing the member states, but uh, to some extent. Uh, so it's important, but the cooperation, the subsidiarity principle is also mentioned that it is also an important point, and this is, should be the spirit of the of the way the, the board uh, will work in the future. Future. Thank you very much, Misha. Though, so that we we tick that box too, right? <laughs> yes, e exactly. So we we are the end now. I I I am wondering if it's difficult to. Uh, to, uh, to 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 conclude such a such a discussion with a with a two minutes uh, summary, but I'm going to ask you if you have some of the panelists would like to say a few words based on the discussions and presentations that we had here. What is your takeaway? Someone want to say, Jean Louis? Maybe you want to start, and then we go to Jimena. Uh, of course, thank you, Gabriel. No, I have not a lot of things to add. I totally agree with what uh, Walter said, and it is necessary to, to insist on the implementation. Uh, just one point. In the chat, uh, I recommend the working paper written by Setzer, the former director of the VNSD, in uh, 1994, just some months after the uh, adoption of the principles. Uh, this paper is really fantastic, and I give in the chat the link to, to reach this paper. Thank you very much, Jean-Louis. Thank you very much, Jean-Louis. Jimena, do you have something? Quick 30 second takeaway. Yeah, yeah, just just would like to share one thing that happens to me, which is every time I read the, the principles, I discover new things. I kind of discover new uh, applications uh, or situations. I link them with new situations in which I find they could be uh, useful. So for me, that uh, reinforced how visionary was uh, the selection of each of the world, but at the same time, how needed it is to have a very uh, updated implementation guideline. Sometimes are like kind of that is that could be continuously improved over over the time because we keep discovering new applications of them. Thank you very much, Jimena. Actually, I mean, you're, yeah, uh, thank you very much, Jimena. Actually, you're telling us the, the principles are intangible. I mean, they, they are valid, but the way we read the principles and the implementation guidelines are also there for that. And we know that the board will also take care of maintaining these guidelines up to date and not to wait 20 years to get new one. But these guidelines mm -hmm. should adapt actually or should help us to read these fundamental principles in our present context, right? And this is something that is uh, very important. Who else want to say something? Halgrimer, Nora, Shalja? Yeah, um, I think one thing that I take away from this is the inclusivity that is coming through with the implementation of the guidelines. I see the inclusion of the policymakers and other stakeholders now taking a center stage, which I think the board also need to pay attention to when they are doing the assignment to make sure that they bring them to the table when they are discussing uh, them with countries and ensure that they actually can be, there's evidence that they're actually doing their work in this whole process. Thank you very much, Nora. Of course, from the principles, very rather easy to derive engagement with data providers, engagement with users, right? It's at the core of the principles, also there for trust matters, but also for the quality eventually of the data that we are we are producing. So they, this, this is very important. Thank you very much. Hargrim or something, and then maybe we go to Shadja. Yes, thank you. Um, uh, I've enjoyed the conversation or the discussion, and it's, I think it's been useful, and the pointers that have come um, are useful. I've already replied to Misha and 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 of course Walter's point 
are, are fully relevant and and to be thought of for this for the board. Um, and um, when that has been um, established, I also like think that uh, the point made by Steve Penick about uh, um, the importance of having a kind of a work program um, um, uh, organized at the very beginning of the of, of the, uh, the following the establishment of the board, etc., is very very important. So so there is a the board kind of uh, tries to focus on on main issues and 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 so on and so forth. I think this is uh, what I take from this. Uh, um, uh, but I keep reminding myself uh, uh, of the time when the fundamental principles were were um, first um, um, written and approved in 1992. Now, at that time, um, in my country didn't have, well, it had a kind of a statistical legislation, but that dated from the year 1913. Uh, so it was uh, very, very old and outdated, and we desperately needed some modern, um, let's say, frame of regulations. And what we did after following the uh, following the approval of the fundamental principles that we simply used the fundamental principles as a kind of a regulatory legal framework and based our work on that and we educated our people about it and our our politicians as well and we were quite successful in that so this is one of the reasons i am such a great follower of of the fundamental principles thank you Thank you very much, uh, Halgrimer, and I just want also to confirm that the generic law on official statistics that is under revision now is actually also based on the fundamental principles of official statistics, exactly as you said. Shaja, if you want to say a, a, a very last yes. word. Yes, a very quick, uh, like seeing the importance of the principles and what the countries had to say, SIAP will definitely endeavor to have a good course, which will probably cater to the needs in partnership with UNST and, of course, the other and uh, inputs from all the experts. And we'll try to concretize and formalize this course as soon as possible. Thank you. That is from Thank the capacity building side. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Haja. I mean, uh, you were not only the representative of Asia and Pacific, you were also the representative of the training institutions and you play yes. a crucial role there. I mean, in, in, sure. in shaping what we are producing in order that it gets accessible also to junior statisticians, as we mentioned before. Yes. Nora, your hand is up. No, you are done. So we are all done. I'm very happy. We are 10 minutes late, taking into account that we started five minutes late. I mean, um, I'm not going to say more now. We are looking forward to see you all in New York for the 55th Statistical Commission. And don't forget, on Monday preceding the Statistical Commission, we have a special event in the afternoon dealing with the fundamental principles of official statistics. So thank you very much to all the panelists. You have been extremely good. Uh, it's always easier for us to put words in your mouth, maybe, or no, when things are coming from you, right? Because you are representative of this diversity. And I was very happy here to have people from different parts of the world speaking on the fundamental principles of official statistics. This clearly indicate they are universal. See you soon. We are working together, so we will continue. Thank you to all the participants for being with us. Thank you also for those that took the floor and made their interventions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.